want to be moving, but going in and out as the word is going forth. Amen. Honor the word of God. Honor the man of God. Amen. Uh, the claim to be the one uh, is often made from a mindset of assurance about one's abilities or anointing to carry out a specific task, duty, or responsibility. In life, just like in sports, we all should strive to be the MVP, <coughs> the top dog, uh, the one who stands out as being the best in the group of whatever profession or vocation we choose or are called to. Uh, we are in a season where a lot of graduations are taking place. And there can only be one valedictorian. There can be only one salutatorian. There can be only one keynote speaker and one class president. Although there are many graduates in attendance yeah. at the same ceremony. Yes. Yeah. In business, there can only be one CEO. There can only be one CFO, Chief Executive Officer, Chief Financial Officer there, though there may be many working in the same company. Yes, it is. In school, there can be only one teacher, though there are many students in the same classroom. Y'all gonna help me preach. Yes, yeah. In marriage, uh -oh. there can be only one head. One yeah. husband yeah. connected to one wife. Yeah. Though there may be many in the same family living in the same household. And so it is with the church. There can be only one pastor. Yes. Yeah. And one vision. Though there be many people called to be in the same ministry. Anything with multiple visions brings about die vision. And anything with two heads is considered a monstrosity. But please understand, and let this encourage you, Deacon Rio, that when God made you, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Cookie, you are the only one of you that he made. Yes. This makes you unique. Yes. This makes you special. And this makes you different. And so you don't have to grow weary by worrying, yes. trying to be like someone else. Right. No one else has your identity. Yes. And if they do, they're guilty of identity theft. Right. You are the only one with your fingerprints. Yes. So you don't have to stress yourself, young people trying to fit the mold of another in order to be accepted in their circle. Because the circles that folk create for you are designed to keep you trapped in and your potential trapped out. The Lord accepted you. And that's all that matters. And his accepting you is not based on how good or how bad you are. But it's based on his love for you. Amen which was shown to us by what Jesus did for us. I'm going to tell your neighbor, say, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one he went to Calvary's cross for. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can shot right there. Yeah. I'm the one he hung, bled, and died for. Yeah. I'm the one he conquered death, hell, and the grave for. Yeah. And I'm the one he rose early Sunday morning for. Yeah. And I'm the one he filled with his precious Holy Spirit. And I'm the one who's going to give him glory. And I'm the one that's going to give him praise for what he's done for me. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to wait for you to join in with me. You see, because you weren't with me when he did what he did to me. 
and for me. You need to shout one more time. I'm the one. I'm the one. May I pray for you. May I pray that you can walk away from here today forever changed. Knowing that you are special to God. He, he, he loves you. Amen. Amen. And the fact that you are unique and unlike any other that he's made makes you special. I, well, preacher, what does the text have to do with me being the one? I'm glad you asked. Because today God wants to show you that there will be times in your life when you will be called away from the comfort. Uh, you'll be called away from those like you and those who will not be able to handle where God is, where God is taking you based on the choices you make to worship Him. As God begins to promote you, yeah. as God begins to heal you and elevate you, uh, there will be others around you that will not be able to go with you because they are afraid of heights. Yeah. <laughs> they reject promotion and the promoted. They can't handle the air at your spiritual level. And it's hard for them to breathe. And that's why they huff and puff in your presence. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because they can't handle the air up there. Amen. And in their frustration, they will try to label you to the level of their low expectations. And you can't let what they call you define you. Amen. 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 Jesus, think of George, was on his way yes. to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that he traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Yeah. Uh, Samaria, my brothers and sisters, was an unpopular place. Uh, it was an unsaved place. And a place where most Jews avoid. In Galilee, uh, Sister Kim was a mountainous place full of hills and valleys. And, 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 and this tells me, uh, you all, that Jesus is kept at the center of your life because he was between Galilee and Samaria. And if Jesus is kept at the center of your life, if you keep him in between, in the middle of your decisions, in the midst of your marriage, in the midst of your ministry, and even in your mess, Amen. he is never too far away from you yes, yes. to do something about it. Amen. Are you hearing me, baby? Yes, I hear. This tells us that he will go to the unpopular places yes, to get you. Yes. He'll come to you at the mountaintop as well as in the valley. Yeah. Uh, in other words, he's with you during your up times yeah. as well as your down times. Yeah. David said it like this in yeah. Psalm 139, 8 through 10. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Yeah. If I make my bed in hell, Behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Jesus will go to the unpopular places to get you. The question was asked uh, in John chapter 1, verse 46, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I just came by to tell somebody that Jesus is willing to go between the rough and unpopular places just to get you because he came from a similar place. He gave up the glory for the ghetto. He gave up heaven for the good. And so just because you came from a rough place does not mean that you have to stay in a rough place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not about where you start, but it's about where you finish. And I don't know about you today, but heaven is my goal. Each and every day, I'm going to keep on moving, hopefully in the right way. But if I stumble as I travel along my way, step aside, don't block me, because I don't want nobody stumbling over me. It was while Jesus was traveling between the rough and unpopular 